Hi, I want to show you a few tips to make your melodies sound a little bit more jazzy. Uh, so I'm not talking about specific chords to use that might sound like you're playing jazz or you're playing something that's jazz influenced, but things that you can do to riffs or to licks or you're improvising. Um, anything that you practice that's one note at a time is a melody and you can do you can doctor that melody a little bit to make it sound like you're playing jazz or you're playing something that's jazz influenced. So I'm going to use this little scale right here as a guinea pig. That's what I was just messing around with. It's a C major scale starting on the G string at the 5th fret. And it goes on the G string, fret 5, 7. On the B string, 5, 6, 8. And the high E string, 5, 7, 8. So backwards, that's 8, 7, 5 on the E. On the B string, it's 8, 6, 5 on the G string. 7, 5. So start by making sure that you can play that up and down both directions somewhat fluidly. So you're primarily looking at your left hand to make sure that you can grab all of those notes. Next thing you want to do is look at your right hand and try to make sure that your right hand is locking into the beat that you're feeling. And the way you can do that is strictly alternate pick these notes. Um, start on that low root on a down stroke. So you go down, up, 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 down. And then you can repeat it from there. Just make sure that every time you come back to that low note, you're making sure that it's still a downstroke on that note. Down. And then all the rest of the notes, you can just tell your hand to alternate pick. Um, and if you're not used to that, you'll have moments where you have to skip over the strings that might feel a little bit awkward. Just practice through those, just be slow and meticulous about keeping your, your uh, alternate picking going. So after your alternate picking, um, the next thing you can do is, um, this is kind of like a, a bonus extra credit thing that you can do, is start it on the high note. Um, so you can start with a down stroke here and you'll be going, every note that you play in here will be reverse picked, picked in the reverse direction as before. So you can go down, up, down, up, down. And loop that over and over. Um, next thing you can do is swing those notes. So you may have encountered the swing feel before. I describe it as um, straight feel is if you were a robot saying the word pizza over and over, you'd say pizza, 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 pizza. If you had a thick Italian accent, you'd say pizza, 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 and that's the swing feel. The robot is straight and the Italian accent is the swing feel. Da, 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 down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So you're, now you're going. And you keep that alternate picking going because that's what really locks the swing feel in. Because every down feels like a strong beat, because it is, it's, a, it's on the beat. And then every upstroke feels like a weak beat, because it is, it's on the upbeat. Um, Next thing you can do is add some legato in there, and legato, uh, legato is a hammer-on or a pull-off or a bend or a slide, any note that you play that's not picked. In this case, we're just going to do hammer-ons and pull-offs. So the way you want to add your legatos in there is going from an upbeat, from an upstroke, to a downbeat, and on that downbeat you'll skip over the downstroke. Your hand will still move down like you're doing a downstroke, you just won't do the downstroke because it's legato. So if we start on our very first note, it has to be a downstroke because there's no note to hammer on or pull off into it. So we're going to go down, up, down. That's on a new string, so we have to pick it. Down, up, down, up, hammer on. That's our first legato that we can get. All of these hammer ons and pull offs, they have to be on the same string as the note prior to them. So we're going to go down, up, down, up, hammer. So work on that for a little bit. Down, up, down. And then when we go to the next string, we want to keep the picking going as if we had picked that hammer on. So we're going to go down, up, down, up, hammer on, up, up, hammer on the, on the high E string. Down, up, down, up, hammer, up, hammer. So that'll give us, get us all the way to our second to last note. Down, up, hammer, up, hammer, up, pull off, up, down. Pull off, up, pull off. Hammer, up, hammer, up, pull off, up, hit down, up, 
pull up, pull. It's hard to do it and say it at the same time. So this is what it ends up sounding like. You speed it up a little bit. So your, your pick hand still ends up going with the beat, um, and your left hand is doing mostly the same thing as before, it just has to manage the extra hammer-ons and pull-offs that are in there. Remember those hammer-ons and pull-offs, when you put them in, should only go from an upbeat into a downbeat. What you end up with is this emphasis, most of your picks are happening on upbeats now, they're not happening on downbeats. So you get this kind of, uh, I don't know, kind of lifted feel, a peppy feel going to dun 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 and you can also influence that by how hard you pick up and how hard you pick down. I'm probably, um, for demonstration, I'm probably emphasizing that upstroke a little more, uh, even if I don't realize it here. So next what you can do is apply that to any other scales that you know. If you know, um, let's see, if you know like a bigger major scale shape like this one, alternate picket, swing it, and then put those legatos in going from an upbeat to a downbeat. And you don't have to do that on every single time it occurs. Uh, for practice purposes, I usually do, and then in real playing, I just kind of pepper the legato in when I feel like it, and I don't. sometimes I'll pick those notes and sometimes I'll do legato. Uh, then what you can do is apply that to real riffs and licks that you actually know from actual songs. Um, I'm going to do a few here that sound uh, that sound pretty salient because the songs are normally heard in a straight feel. Um, so this will, all, the rest of this will just be for comedy. Um, but when you do this for real, it doesn't have to just be for comedy. You can do it to actually make art and make uh, make genuine music. So here's one. So that was straight. This is what it would be in in uh, this swing feel. this one. Uh, and now in the swing feel would be something like Sweet Child of Mine, that's, uh, I don't think we have two consecutive notes going from an upbeat to a downbeat on any, on the same string, so you wouldn't get any of the legato effect here, but you could still swing it and make it funny. So you can take that on any of those, any riff, classic riffs like that, and just put a swing feel on it, and it's, it sounds kind of funny. Um, or if you're writing music, this can be really, really effective. Um, experiment with turning a song that, that you wrote in a swing feel, experiment with moving it over to straight. A song that you wrote in a straight feel, experiment with moving it over to a swing feel, put this alternate picking on it, and all the legato in there, and it will sound kind of like you're right down the jazz guitar playing alley, because of all those, specifically because of all the legatos going from upbeats to downbeats. Uh, which is uh, mostly specific to jazz. And I actually use this approach pretty much across the board when I'm actually playing jazz, when it's a swing feel. When there's all kinds of jazz that's also in straight feel, and then I, I just take the same concepts of legato and just move them over to the straight feel, so it's something like... 
or if I'm playing really fast in a swing feel, it tends to straighten out anyway. Um, so the swing is not so much the essential thing there, it's the legato that gives it that jazzy feel. So have fun with that. Let me know how it goes in the comments. Thank you.